God's grace, His mercy, and His peace are yours through faith in Christ our Savior. Amen. Our sermon text for this Good Shepherd Sunday and also Confirmation Sunday comes to us from the letter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. St. Luke tells us that Paul says, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is God's Word. My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our only Savior and our Good Shepherd. In the story of the three little pigs, the big bad wolf wants to devour the pigs. So the pigs find refuge in the first house. It is made of straw. The wolf easily blows that first house down. So then the three little pigs scamper off to the second house. It is made of twigs. The wolf easily blows that house down. Finally, the three little pigs find refuge in the third house. It is made of bricks. So the big bad wolf huffs and puffs. He blows and he blusters. But he cannot blow down the brick house. Now the moral of that story is, is trust and safety. Never trust your life to something flimsy. When it comes to your life, always make sure that you entrust your life to a safe and secure sanctuary and refuge. And this is especially true of our spiritual life, of our life of faith. Now in our text, St. Paul tells us why. St. Paul warns the pastors in Ephesus about a ferocious wolf. St. Paul says, Savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth. We have the same problem today. Today, savage spiritual wolves, that is false prophets, are out to devour your faith and your salvation. Their false teachings blow like a hurricane against you. And if we trust our, entrust our faith and salvation to the straw huts of our own spirituality, those ferocious wolves will quickly consume us with their errors and with their heresies. But it does not have to be that way because we have an impenetrable fortress where we find security. And our fortress is not built out of brick and mortar. Our almighty fortress is built of flesh and blood. Our almighty fortress is Jesus Christ. Now today Jesus calls himself our good shepherd. And in our gospel lesson, Jesus proclaims to us our peace, our security, our safety in him. Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So as we celebrate the festival of the Good Shepherd, as we look forward to Sunday's confirmation, we listen to God's Word tell us, be confirmed and committed to God. Now our text takes place at the end of St. Paul's third mission journey. St. Paul had just set sail from Greece, the mainland of Greece, and he was headed towards Jerusalem, but he wanted to see his dear friends in the city of Ephesus and encourage them. But Ephesus was too far out of its way because Ephesus was an inland city. So Paul arranges to meet the pastors of the Ephesian congregations on a beach close to Ephesus. Now when Paul meets with these Ephesian overseers, bishops, elders, whatever you want to call them, he knew that it was the last time he would see them on this earth. And so Paul really stresses the important points. Yes, he does more than just tell them to be aware of the savage wolves of false preachers. He also charges these men to be faithful pastors over the church of God. He tells them to be shepherds, to be pastors, like Jesus Christ was the good shepherd. 
watching, loving, caring, and dedicated. Paul also commits them to God. That is, Paul tells them to not trust their own power, but rather to trust in God's power alone to carry out their ministry and to defend their churches from all false teaching. Now, Paul's message was originally spoken to, again, like I said, pastors, overseers, elders of the church. But Paul's words also apply to you and me. And you can almost imagine Paul telling us, keep watch over your faith. Don't ever let your guard down when it comes to defending your faith. Otherwise, you can easily lose your faith because of false teaching or because of impenitent sinning. And losing your faith means losing your salvation. So put your trust in a safe and reliable place. Put your trust in Christ and Christ alone. Yes, listen to your pastor speak the word of God to you, but don't put your trust for salvation in your pastor. Do not do that. Rather, put your trust for salvation again in Jesus Christ, your good shepherd. Listen to the truth that your pastor proclaims. Because that word of God points to Christ, the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Now, of course, Jesus did die. Jesus poured out his blood on the cross. And the blood that Jesus poured out on the cross is pure, precious, and holy because it flows out of the veins of a perfectly sinless man. But besides being a true man, Jesus Christ was also true God. And that's what makes his blood especially powerful and able to purify us from all sins. And that's what Paul states in our text. He says to the pastors, be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. So again, Paul tells those Ephesian pastors, yes, watch over the church, but understand that your church is never really your church. Your church really is the church that God bought that God bought with his own blood. And yes, God shed his blood on the cross because Jesus Christ is true God and true man in one person. And since Jesus Christ is true God, the blood of God was shed on the cross to purchase and redeem sinners for himself. And again, that's what, what Paul means when he says to them, be shepherds of the church of God, which God bought with his, with God's own blood. So the Ephesian pastors had, and today every pastor has, a great responsibility. Jesus calls his pastors to watch over the church like a shepherd. And that's why Paul tells the Ephesian pastors, Oh, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. And again, besides applying to pastors, these words of Paul also apply to all of you. Jesus Christ is also your almighty good shepherd. Jesus guards your faith. Jesus builds you up in your faith. Jesus gives you an inheritance of eternal life. You are bound together with those who are sanctified. That is, you are not one single solitary sheep, but rather you belong to Christ's flock, whole flock which he shepherds here on this earth and which he brings to eternal life in heaven. But how does Jesus do all that? How does Jesus guard and protect your faith? How does Jesus build you up and strengthen you in your faith? How does Jesus do everything that a good shepherd has to do for his flock? Well, Jesus does all of these things by using his word. That's why St. Paul tells the Ephesians, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. And that brings us to the confirmation of the Bible passage that our confirmand chose for her confirmation. Listen to that verse and a verse before it. All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Now, human strength is like flowers in a vase. Human wisdom, human glory are like blossoms on spring trees and bushes. A blossoms and flowers look nice, but they only last a short while, a week or two, maybe three at the most. And then 
They die. But the word of our God stands forever. God's word is eternal. So the, the ferocious wolves of false doctrine can huff and puff all they want against God's word, against Christ and his church. God's word will continue to stand. God's word will continue to protect your faith. God's word will continue to build and strengthen your faith. God's word can do all of that and more. God's word can do all of that because God's word, well, God's word is Jesus Christ in the flesh. And as God's word, Jesus is also your good shepherd. And again, as Jesus said, I give my sheep eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So believe, believe Jesus. Be confirmed and be committed to God. Be confirmed and strengthened by God's word. Be dedicated and, 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 and entrusted to God, to Jesus Christ the good shepherd, the shepherd of your souls. Do that. But unfortunately, you and I, we don't do that, do we? So often we are not even as smart as the three little pigs. We would rather find our eternal safety and our eternal security in the straw hut of our own holiness, our own righteousness our own spirituality. And so it's easy for us to say, yeah, sure, I, I believe in God. I know Jesus loves me. But I don't have to like, go to church all the time. Or even if I do go to church all the time, I don't always have to pay like strict attention to what's going on because I know what's going to happen. And, you know, I don't have to really study the Bible or go to Bible class or things like that. And I don't have to confess my sins to the pastor. I and I don't even really have to take communion every single weekend. Because I know I, know I believe in Jesus. I can, I can take care of myself. Well, no, you cannot take care of yourself. Nobody can. And if you think that you can, well, then you are like a foolish sheep who wanders away from the flock. You are like a foolish sheep who deliberately leaves the care of the good shepherd. And that makes you a ridiculously easy target for the ferocious wolves of false doctrine and an easy target for that roaring lion who prowls around looking for you to devour. So don't wander away from Jesus. Stay with your good shepherd. Be confirmed and committed to God, Jesus Christ, your good shepherd. But also rejoice and be glad and, and give glory to God because Jesus will always remain your good shepherd. He will not abandon you like you have abandoned him. Because Jesus is confirmed and Jesus is committed to you and to being your Savior. Jesus already died to pay for all of your sins. Jesus already rose from his tomb. And Jesus has the power to give your lifeless body the resurrection from its tomb so that he can give you the glories of everlasting life in heaven. And that's why you find security and safety in Jesus. Jesus is much stronger than a brick house. Jesus is your mighty friends. Jesus is the Word of God in human flesh and blood. And the Word of our God stands forever. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 